In a time long, long ago, in the middle of a coniferous forest, live five species of insectivorous wood warblers that set out to fight against the tyrant competitive exclusion principle. The five friends wanted badly to coexist, though all the thrushes laughed at them and asserted, you can't all live and breed together while occupying the same niche. One of you will surely outcompete the rest. During the summer of 1956, after endless ridicule, the birds were about ready to give up. Until a man appeared. I'm Robert MacArthur, and I'd like to help you warblers out. Let me observe your feeding habits, nesting locations, and breeding territories, and we can determine whether or not you guys actually do occupy the same niche. So for the next two summers, MacArthur began mapping the locations of warbler activity in tree canopies and recorded his findings. At the end of summer 1957, MacArthur stated, the birds behave in such a way as to be exposed to different kinds of food. He noted that the yellow rumped warbler fed from the middle parts of the trees to the forest floor and had the most varied feeding habits. The black-throated green warbler and the bay-breasted warbler fed in the middle part of the trees. And the Blackburnian warbler and the Cape May warbler fed on the outer tops of the trees. The Cape May also hawked flying insects and tended to move vertically rather than horizontally. He also found they have different nesting times, and thus the times of their peak food requirements are not the same. MacArthur finally concluded that the birds don't need to beat the competitive exclusion rule because they are occupying different niches. They are partitioning the limiting resource, their supply of insects, and in the process, occupying different niches.